Colleen Thompson is one of those Americans now in Ukraine trying to rescue the teenager she was in the process of adopting, and she joins us live now from Lviv. Colleen, thank you for being here. I can't imagine how difficult this has been for you. Can you walk me through your decision to travel to Ukraine despite State Department warnings and what it has been like there? Um, I decided to come here because we were um, awaiting court for the finalization of our daughter who was evacuated from Donetsk to um, Lviv. I also came because we were working with um, several government agencies helping to evacuate children from orphanages and aged out children who had graduated from the orphanage. We were helping to evacuate them in the early um, stages of the war. So the group of volunteers that kind of came together to help, we decided we needed to be on the ground. Um, everybody came to Poland and then I decided to cross over from Krakow into Lviv um, to see my daughter and to kind of assess the situation and to be the feet on the ground as far as um, evacuation and aid for the two nonprofits that are working together to help these orphans. And so how is she doing? Um, probably as well as can be expected. I think all the kids in her group um, are still kind of shell-shocked. Um, our daughter was evacuated in 2014 from Donetsk when Russia invaded the first time. And then she was evacuated again the day after the invasion. And she spent two days traveling from Donetsk um, to get here to Lviv. They had to travel in a caravan through missile strikes and air raid sirens, and um, it was a really harrowing trip. So I think the 43 kids that made the trip from her group are all still trying to recover, except now they're in an orphanage here in Lviv, and we have air raid sirens here multiple times a day, and the children have to go to a bunker um, underneath the orphanage every time. So. It happens all times of day and night, and it's distressing and scary. So I would say under all those circumstances, the kids are doing okay, but it's definitely concerning. And how much contact are you able to have with Mar right now? Oh, I see Mari every day. Um, I was at the orphanage last night and took the kids all pizzas for, for dinner. So I'm usually there once a day. Um, helping with some English tutoring, taking donations. We have um, nonprofits who are sending items, not only to this orphanage, but others. So I'm able to go to deliver those and check on the kids. Able to do FaceTime calls with the kiddos in this group who are being adopted by Americans so that they can say hi to their children and see them. And just overall finding out what these orphanages that kind of stepped in to take these children um, need and then filling those needs. And where does your adoption process stand currently? Um, we are awaiting a final court decree. So I am, I am waiting and, and hopeful. Now, but, um, since the invasion, Colleen, the EU and some other countries like Peru have allowed these children to seek refuge with their future adoptive parents, even if that process isn't complete. The U.S. has yet to extend that invitation, but there are over 75 lawmakers calling on the State Department to do that. So do you have a sense at all of how likely that is to happen? Well, we had a State Department phone call last night with adoptive parents who were in the final stages of adoption, and it's with the Office of Children's Issues. And we again were told last night that the State Department has done nothing as far as inviting the children who are in the adoption process with the American families, which you said is about 300 children. So over 230 U.S. families have been working to complete these adoptions. And for reasons that we don't understand, even with Senator Klobuchar's letter that you mentioned that has bipartisan, bicameral support, the State Department has not even extended an offer to Ukraine to allow these children just to come back to the U.S. to have respite and safety until it's safe for them to return to Ukraine. Meanwhile, 22 EU countries, many of whom don't do adoptions and don't have the strong ties that America does, are housing these children. And um, it, I don't know if you've reported or not, but there's 30 to 40 children that were taken from orphanages into Spain that are now missing already. So what the U.S. families are saying and what the Senator Klobuchar letter is saying to the State Department and President Biden is we offer a safe haven for these children. They have been to the U.S. before on hosting programs. These American families 
have been vetted, background checked, trained, and they're bonded with these children. They're in the process of adopting. We are the best suited and most safe option for these children to have a place to stay while it's unsafe to be in Ukraine. And that's all we're asking for. It seems like a simple ask. These kids are in the system. The adults who hosted them are all vetted. And we were told last night on the parents call with the State Department, we haven't offered this option to Ukraine. Well, Colleen, hoping you get a resolution soon and wishing you and all of those children a safety while they're in Ukraine. Thank you. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.